It's in glorious black and white. Today we're going to take a look at some classic black and white Mickey Mouse shorts from the 1930s, but as they were presented in an unusual way. With the advent of full color Technicolor in 1932, and with Mickey Mouse moving to color in 1935 with the band concert, the older black and white Mickey Mouse cartoons were less and less valued. But in 1974, because of the nostalgia craze in the 1970s, which, by the way, was started by Mickey Mouse, with the resurgence of popularity of the Mickey Mouse watch in 1968, Disney decided to release a group of classic 1930s Mickey Mouse cartoons to theaters, celebrating the fact that they were in black and white. These cartoons had not been seen since they were showcased on the Mickey Mouse Club as mouse cartoons. <laughs> And that means they hadn't been seen since the 1960s, when the Mickey Mouse Club was in syndication for the first time. And in fact, it was the first time that these cartoons had been officially reissued since they were first seen in the 1930s. So I have here this photocopy of a Disney News Bulletin, a press release, announcing the reissue of these classic cartoons. It's entitled, meaning Disney's distribution company, Buena Vista to re-release vintage Mickey Mouse shorts. A selected number of Mickey shorts from the Walt Disney Library of the early 1930s are being offered for the first time to theaters on a one-at-a-time basis in the United States and Canada. This was pretty big news and a big push for Disney. It was even announced in the Disney News Magazine. Although among the titles to be released in this announcement was Mickey's Melodrama. And in fact, as you can see, it shows the poster. Apparently, wiser heads prevailed. And this particular cartoon about Mickey and his friends staging a production of Uncle Tom's Cabin was not among the final titles to be reissued. The release of these cartoons was aimed at youth and college audiences, and the cartoons were marketed as being fun, nostalgic, and campy. These cartoons were Mickey's Good Deed, Shanghai, The Mail Pilot, Two Gun Mickey, Building a Building, and Touchdown Mickey. With Mickey's Good Deed actually being released in December of 1973 because of its Christmas theme, Disney was even promoting these films as the perfect accompaniment to box office hits that did appeal to the youth market. The 1974 reissue of the black and white Marx Brothers classic, Animal Crackers. So you can see how this is all fitting together. Most Disney cartoons that were available for distribution were available to any movie theater that wanted to run them, but I suspect they weren't often run in the 1970s with non-Disney features. So at this point in time, this was a different approach. Disney cartoons had been officially reissued since 1947, starting with Hawaiian Holiday. And this was true over the years. For example, The Three Little Pigs received a special reissue in 1968 befitting its special stature as one of the most popular Disney cartoons or any cartoon ever made. But this special 1974 nostalgic program was the first reissue for these black and white cartoons. Disney even made available a press kit, which you can see here, to promote this program. And you can see it says presenting the original uncut 
all talking, all singing, sound cartoons from the 3030s, rare vintage films starring me, Mickey Mouse, in vivid black and white. And inside was this background sheet. Nostalgia movement brings back original Mickey Mouse cartoons. There were also some ads inside, sort of an ad pad. <laughs> that I don't have. It was not included in this copy of the press kit that I own, but you can see it here, and it has ads that could be run in the newspaper, as well as a synopsis for every cartoon. I'm glad this sheet shows the posters, and according to Disney, these specially issued one sheets based on the originals from the 1930s were instant collector's items. So all of the posters had some fun copy, like, the poster for Two Gun Mickey. It says he's the goodest of the good guys. And in addition to being rated G, the poster says it's in shocking black and white. <laughs> the poster for Touchdown Mickey says, yesterday's hero, today's superstar, Walt Disney's the one and only Mickey Mouse. The poster for the male pilot says the uncut, uncensored sound cartoon. In a great example of showmanship, each of these cartoons was given a specially created animated opening to partially celebrate the fact that they're in black and white and to explain that they're in black and white. Because I'm sure audiences in the 1970s were surprised to see a Disney cartoon in black and white. And this animated opening was very much like the cover of this press kit. So that was just a brief consideration of this unusual and really fun marketing anomaly that represented these great Mickey Mouse classics and offered modern day audiences an opportunity to enjoy them on the big screen. Thank <laughs> you.